Hi everyone, today we're going to show you how to climb one of the tallest mountains in the world. That's right, Mount Atlas in Morocco reaches up to 4,200 meters high, just shy of Africa's tallest mountain, Kilimanjaro. And if that's not cool enough, within a short distance you can also visit the wonderful and mysterious city of Marrakesh. In this video, we will walk you through getting to the Mount Atlas summit and also the best sites to check out in Marrakesh. This is a flexible destination which has plenty to offer over a long weekend or even much longer. If we haven't met before, we are the out of office traveler, we're friends from London with full time jobs and a major travel hobby. We put out travel guides every two weeks, so stick your out of office on and let's check it out. Morocco is located in the north of Africa within close reach of Europe. To get to the Atlas Mountains, you can fly in and out of Marrakesh, which has a large international airport and is only located about three and a half hours from London. After arriving from the airport, I checked into my Riyadh. These unique Moroccan buildings typically have a courtyard in the center. They are super popular in Marrakesh and are a great option if you want to stay somewhere with a more traditional feel. A number also have beautiful rooftops and some even come with pools. Although of course, you'll find a range of accommodation options in Marrakesh too, with a number of more western hotels available as well. I decided to join a tour company to get me to the Atlas Mountains. The next morning, I joined a group of 10 plus 2 guides. They picked me up from my Riyadh and explained how the next 3 days were going to unfold. I'll stick the company name I used in the description in case you want to use it as well. Tours can be flexible depending on your needs, like if you prefer a smaller or larger group or a shorter or longer trip. On the first day, the minibus picks you up from Marrakesh and takes you on a two hour drive to the town of Emil. This is where you ditch the van and get your hiking boots on. From this point on, you're in the hands of your guides and your feet. On the first walk, you will go past some cute villages and really dramatic scenery, including some unexpected waterfalls. The guides usually call the breaks, but they are super friendly and helpful and will adjust the pace according to the group's ability. They will also provide you with a sit down lunch halfway through the walk at a local cafe. The first day was about six hours of walking until we reached the Tukbal Refuge or base camp, which is at 3,200 meters high. At this point, you really start to feel the altitude. The accommodation was really modest, so don't expect Wi Fi or even electricity all day. I found this weird at first, but you won't be spending much time here other than sleeping and having your meals. The fact that it was so remote made me enjoy the surroundings a lot more. I did notice that there were different types of rooms and sleeping options there. Our tour had us stay in dorm rooms with our group, however other options were available from tents to private accommodation, depending on the tour that you selected. The next morning, the alarm went off at 4 o'clock in the morning and it was time to get kitted out including putting on thermals, a winter jacket, and a head torch to start the climb. It can get chilly here, especially in the mornings and depending on what time of year you travel. This one was in June. As you can see, there is some really beautiful scenery as you climb up, but this is where it does start to get challenging. These last 1000 meters or so are really steep. And then, at last, what we all came for, you reach the tube call summit, just check out these views. You're also rewarded with the views of the clouds above the mountains, and all of a sudden, the hard work feels so worth it. Enjoy, take selfies, and replenish as everything that goes up must come back down. And just like that, you then have to walk back down to base camp where we have another meal and just try to get a good night's sleep before tomorrow's hike too. So if you feel like you didn't get to enjoy the summit enough the first time around, you get to do it all again on the third day. There is a sister summit to Mount Tubecall called the Twin Peaks, which is a slightly smaller mountain range nearby at 4,100 meters, only 100 meters shorter. Again, you start at around 5 a.m., but this time you hike a different path. While it was longer than tube call, it was not as steep and the views were absolutely incredible. I would say it was probably my favorite day of the trip. You can see how the group and I just had to stop for pictures. As I mentioned before, you also have to get through the altitude part which makes the hike even more challenging. But don't let this put you off. Others are in the same boat and there's a real sense of team spirit and plenty of support from the group and from the guides. I was also really surprised by the different terrains, including the snow which a few of us had some fun sliding down. There were some loose rocks that did make the descent more challenging, but again, the views were totally worth it. We then made it back to base camp, had lunch, and then as a group gave the guides a well-deserved tip. We then walked back down to the town of Emil and caught our transfer back to the Riyadh in Marrakesh. I only had a few days in Marrakesh, so the next morning, the number one item on my itinerary was the YSL Gardens. I'm usually skeptical of gardens being the number one attraction of a location, however, these gardens were really unique. The gardens were created by a Morocco-loving French painter called Jacques Majorelle and preserved by the fashion designer himself, Yves Saint Laurent. The French designer found the garden as a constant source of inspiration. 
When you're here, it's easy to see why YSL thought this. These are landscape gardens which combine a unique blend of exotic plants, gorgeous ponds, and beautiful building facades, which mean if you like taking photos, this is a place to come. This is a great place to spend a couple of hours walking around and enjoying some peacefulness in the middle of Marrakesh. You will probably need to get a taxi to and from the Jardin Majorel, and so after a quick stop for some food, I moved on to the next stop. So yes, the next stop is another park, but this one is also unique for another reason. Locals told me that Morena Park is where the locals go early on a Sunday with their families and friends. It was a cool tip to check out, as I saw the locals enjoying their weekends by having their picnics and also enjoying playing music and singing. After the park, I got a taxi back to the city center of Marrakesh's old town called Medina. This part of town has over 19 kilometers of old walls surrounding the city, is a UNESCO site, and is home to some of Morocco's most unique sites. First on the list was the Qutubia Mosque. Built in the 1100s, this mosque is still the tallest building in Marrakesh. A short walk from the Qutubia Mosque, you are able to enter one of the most unique marketplaces in the world. You can absolutely not miss the souks in Marrakesh. You will be able to go past a number of unique Moroccan traditions. For example, a public bakery where locals come to get their baked goods and hammams, which are local saunas. But the souks are a must. It can be an overwhelming sensory experience. There is a lot going on here. But these markets sell everything from clothes to food, antiques, crafts and materials. You can find it all. Just be aware that Medina is massive. It's very easy to get lost here, so make sure you have some reference points to navigate yourself around. In my experience, I felt very safe and that I found I could always ask locals for directions as well. There are also plenty of rooftop restaurants and cafes here in the same format as the Riyads we discussed, such as Cozy Bar, where you can grab a snack and watch the world go by as the sun goes down. Finally, don't forget to take a stroll in the Medina at night. It really does come alive. Singing, dancing, and food options are all on display at night. The main square is called Jama El Fna, and this is the place to soak up the colorful atmosphere by night. For my last day, I wanted to hit a couple of different spots that I still had left to see, and I know we haven't even spoken yet about the food. There are plenty of traditional and Western options available in Marrakesh, and I was really impressed by the quality of the more traditional spots such as this place called Eight Bougmez Restaurant, which has this incredible tic and tagine and an amazing view of the Kutubia. You could see how not touristy it was given we had the place to ourselves. This was a real gem. The next stop you should check out is the Ben Yusuf School. This is a madrasa school, or a school that was focused on Islamic studies but now functions as a historical site. Here, you'll also find some gorgeous mosaics and beautiful architecture. There are lots of different rooms to discover, and it's just a generally unique building providing a great opportunity for some Instagram pics. Tickets were around 10 dirham, which is around one pound. A short walk away is the Jardin Secret. Okay, so it's another garden. If you've already checked out the other two I recommended, maybe this could be a bit overkill. However, there is something special about finding this tranquil spot in the middle of the Medina, in between all of the souks. The complex dates back over 400 years and has been home for some of Morocco's most important political figures. After a busy morning exploring, I stopped at one of these rooftop restaurants I was talking about called Nomad. This beautiful coffee and burger went down a tree, as did the water sprinkler to cool everyone down as we sat up on the rooftop. The next item on my itinerary was to check out the Bahia Palace, which literally translates as beautiful palace. When Morocco gained independence from France in 1956, the palace was used as a royal residence. Nowadays, the building serves as a cultural icon and tourist attraction with public events being held at the palace. The palace is huge and has over 150 rooms open to the public. The Cour de Honneur, a grand courtyard with its floor of Italian Carrara marble is a key highlight. And just like that, it was already time for my last meal. I decided to go to a really highly rated place called Narange, which is a Lebanese restaurant with some of the highest reviews on Google that I have ever seen. I had a beef shawarma, which was really, really good and really fitting as a final meal in Marrakesh. Sadly, it was time to go after five amazing days in Marrakesh and Mount Atlas. I built this trip into a long weekend, so I only actually used two days of annual leave for this one. We think Marrakesh is a perfect weekend destination, and you can always add Mount Atlas on as an additional activity. And that concludes our Morocco trip today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment for us below. 
We put out videos every two weeks and we have a couple of exciting new series coming up. So if you want to see more, we'd love for you to subscribe and follow along. Thanks for traveling with us today and we'll see you next time.